On today's episode, Nord Stream 2 is go for natural gas, Mala changes EV motor technology, and Boeing builds faster digitally. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. With the colonial fuel pipeline shut down last week, focus has returned to the energy industry and the Biden administration has quietly announced a very significant shift in policy. The company that's building the big Nord Stream 2 project to pipe gas directly from Russia to Germany will no longer be subject to sanctions. The company, Switzerland-based Nord Stream 2 AG, is owned by Russian energy giant Gazprom. The shift is significant since it signals a change in the U.S. approach to the gas mega project, which bypasses the route through contested regions of Ukraine and cements Russia as Europe's major natural gas supplier. Now, under the Trump administration, sanctions against companies involved in the project were intended to stop the pipeline in favor of U.S. liquefied natural gas transported by ship to European ports. The Nord Stream 2 project is essentially a doubling of the original Nord Stream twin line, which at 760 miles in length is the longest subsea pipeline in the world. The project will double the original system capacity to 110 million cubic meters per year. Sources familiar with the matter reported by Axios.com state that with the line 95% complete, the only way to stop the project would be to impose sanctions on the end user of the gas, Germany. The line is expected to be complete by midsummer. Biden administration sources claim that the overall goal is still to prevent Russian gas shipments to Germany, but with the line complete and a considerable cost advantage compared to sea shipment of liquefied natural gas, it's unclear what Washington can do to stop it. We'll know this fall. The key enabling technologies for electric vehicles are, of course, a battery, a motor, and electronics that control them both. Battery technology is generally regarded as the key to rapid adoption of electric vehicles, but motors are developing rapidly too. Auto Parts Tier 1 supplier Mala has developed a new type of electric motor that operates without magnets, a significant advantage given the projected worldwide shortage of the critical rare earths needed to make high-performance magnets. Now, Electromagnets in electric motors is not a new idea, and AC induction motors have been used for over a century, but current EV technology using synchronous motors and permanent magnets are not only expensive, but they're heavy. The new Mala development uses an excitation coil built into the rotor, but more significantly sends the power to the rotating element, not through brushes or slip rings, but using an inductive pickup. Now, this contactless system in the new motor should have a service life similar to AC induction motors, with bearing wear being the primary limiting factor. The company claims 96% efficiency in a scalable design that can be applied to vehicles from small passenger cars to heavy trucks. Electronics will be different from conventional motor technology as AC power is needed for the inductive coupling, which must be rectified to DC inside the motor for the electromagnets. Now, it's unclear from the company where that AC comes from, but it's certain to involve an inverter, then switch back to DC with a rectifier inside the motor itself. Now, eliminating brushes means converting the current from DC from the battery to AC for the coupling, then back to DC for the electromagnets. Now, from an EV manufacturer perspective, the other alternative for non-contact, no-magnet drive motors are AC induction motors anyways. The inverter assembly may be the better option compared to expensive rare earth magnets. Model-based engineering is widely regarded as the future of product development from design to production, and Boeing has demonstrated the capability of this doctrine in a tough real-world application. The company has joined the front and rear fuselage sections of a Boeing Saab T-7A Red Hawk military jet trainer with an alignment so close that the splice took less than 30 minutes. That's 95% less time than conventional production and with a higher quality joint. The aft fuselage sections are built by Saab in Linköping, Sweden, and are shipped to St. Louis for assembly to the Boeing built front section. The first airframe will be used as a static test article and will be followed by five engineering test aircraft out of the planned 351 aircraft U.S. Air Force order. The company reports a 98% reduction in drilling defects and an overall 50% improvement in production quality. Fuselage joins, or splices as they're called in the industry, are major costs in aircraft production and have become more critical since both Boeing and Airbus have developed heavily outsourced airframe programs with sections manufactured by multiple companies in multiple factories worldwide. The all-digital design of the Red Hawk has resulted in an 80% reduction in assembly hours and a 50% reduction in software development and verification time. Will this be the end of shimming and match drilling on the line? Well, perhaps, but there is a hidden benefit to precise, repeatable large assemblies in production. They're much more easily automated. Now, we'll be watching for robotic assembly to follow digital design and volume aircraft production soon. 
Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.